Hello and welcome everyone. Today we'll be talking about hepatitis B. So basically in this class, we'll be talking about what is hepatitis B, what is the transmission of hepatitis B, what is the group, hai, clinical manifestations, kya hai, or how can we diagnose the hepatitis B infection. So starting with the introduction. So basically as the name is saying, hepatitis B is caused by hepatitis B virus, which is known as HBV virus. It is a circular Double stranded DNA virus. So, you have to remember that all other viruses, your hepatitis A, hepatitis C, D, and E, they are the RNA virus. And we have hepatitis B, which is a DNA virus. It has been seen that in Southeast Asia region of origin, the prevalence of hepatitis B in general population is more than 2%, which is a big number. And when we talk about incubation period, the average incubation period for hepatitis B is 75 days and it ranges between one month to six months, that is 30 days to 180 days. And it has been seen that the hepatitis B infection here, we can have acute infection, we can have chronic infection. Chronic infection with hepatitis B is common, which may lead to complications also such as cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. So what is cirrhosis? Cirrhosis is the irreversible condition where what happens, the hepatocytes are completely damaged and there is a scarring of the liver cells. And what is hepatocellular carcinoma? It is a condition where there is a primary liver tumor. Now, cancer is in uh, liver cells, mein, then it is known as a hepatocellular carcinoma. So this is how the hepatitis B virus looks like. Why I would like you people to know about it is because you should know about three antigens which are present. Con -con -si antigens hai? They are the core antigen, then we have, have the envelope antigen and then we have the surface antigen. So jo andar ki taraf ko hoga, as the name is saying, it is your HBC antigen. It means HBV core antigen. The next one which is outside that core is known as HBE antigen means hepatitis B envelope antigen and then the one which is present on the surface is known as HBS antigen that is hepatitis B surface antigen. So this is important because it is important to diagnose a patient with the hepatitis B infection. The next one is about transmission. Ki jo hepatitis B virus hai, wo kis se transmit hota hai? What are the modes of transmission for the same? Remember, when we talk about the transmission of hepatitis B virus, broadly we can classify it as uh, the vertical transmission and the horizontal transmission. If the mother is infected with virus and she passes the infection to the, the newborn baby, this is known as vertical transmission. All other routes of transmission are known as horizontal transmission, such as it can be transmitted through the contaminated needles, through the needle stick injuries. It can be transmitted through the unprotected sexual intercourse if one partner is positive with the hepatitis B virus. Then it can also be transmitted by sharing uh, the personal use items with uh, each other. One person might be infected and if he or she is sharing these items with the other people, there are chances that they might also get infected. The uh, then it is also seen uh, commonly after the tattoo making. Why tattoo uh, ke baad ho sakta hai? Because uh, the person who is doing the tattooing might not be following the aseptic precautions. Aseptic in the sense, jo wo needles use karte hai, they might not be sterile. And if they are using uh, the the same needle on multiple people, multiple customers. Suppose one patient was positive, he uh, might use the same needle on the other people also and the other people might, might also get infected with the virus. And then the blood transfusion. If the transfused blood is not screened for the viruses, bloodborne um, blood borne viruses like hepatitis B virus, there are chances that you might get infection from that also. Along with knowing about the transmission route, ye bhi important hai janna ki what are the uh, routes by which the hepatitis B virus is not spreading. Why it is important to know? Because agar hume pata hoga ki kis se spread hota hai, kis se spread nahi hota hai, we'll be able to pass the correct information to our patients and their families also. And because of which what will happen, the myths, misconceptions and the stigma associated with the disease can be, can be decreased to some extent. 
तो किस तरह से स्प्रेड नहीं होता है इट कैन नॉट बी स्प्रेड थ्रू कॉन्टामिनेटेड फूड और शेडिंग ऑफ फूड विद ईच अदर ब्रेस्ट शेडिंग से ट्रांसमिट uh, नहीं होता है द हैंड होल्डिंग और हैंड शेकिंग विद द पर्सन हु इज इन्फेक्टेड विद दैपेटाइटिस बी वायरस और कफिंग एंड स्नेजिंग सो इन रूप से दैपेटाइटिस बी वायरस डजन स्प्रेड एंड इट इज आर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू स्प्रेड टू डिसमिनेट द करेक्ट इन्फॉर्मेशन टू दी कम्युनिटी एट लार्ज ऑल्सो की ये जो रूट्स हैं वो मोड ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन नहीं है हेपेटाइटिस बी वायरस के होने के लिए The next one is who all are the high risk group. High risk group का मतलब है those individuals who are having high risk of getting the hepatitis B virus infection as compared to the general population. So it has been seen that those infants who are born to the infected mothers, अगर mothers positive होंगे chances है कि उनके जो newborn babies होंगे they might also be positive with the hepatitis B infection. then the sex partners of infected persons if the uh, the per one partner is positive and uh, they are not following the uh, safe sexual practices chances hai ki unke partner bhi positive ho sakte hain infection ke liye then the drug injection drug users why injection dr drug users because it has been seen that people who uh, abuse the drugs who are the injection drug users they might sit in a common uh, room six seven people in a group and might inject the uh, drugs and might share the needles with each other if in case one person is positive there are chances other people might also get infected from uh, that person and then the healthcare professionals we all are healthcare professionals and we all comes in the category of a high risk uh, group for the hepatitis b infection why because we are also in uh, contact with the uh, the blood and body fluids of the person needle stick injuries sharp injuries they are very common among uh, the healthcare workers and because of which we are also at high risk of having the infection and then the next one is hemodialysis patient kyu hemodialysis patient because these patients are coming in the hospital very frequently you can say every uh, like three times a week or uh, twice a week they come in the hospitals and suppose if the precautions are not been taken properly or if the the circuit the uh, the dialyzer circuit which has been used it is not disinfected properly there are chances that these people are also uh, they can also catch the infection very easily as compared to the general population so it is very important to know which all are the high risk groups and it is also important to educate them and also to provide them the vaccination uh, like uh, in the basis of uh, they should be the priority for the vaccination also because they all uh, are the high risk group after which we will learn about the clinical manifestations ki if a person is uh, getting uh, this infection kis tarah se manifest karega how the person how the disease will be manifested clinically so when we talk about the clinical manifestations broadly we can divide it in the, uh, on the basis of three phases we have prodromal phase we have ectric phase and then we have the convalescent phase the prodromal phase mein kya hota hai the person might be asymptomatic or they might be vague symptoms present like the person may, might have anorexia theek hai bhook nahi lag rahi hai they might be nausea vomiting abdominal pain might be there even the person might have fever or they might be joint pain so these flu like symptoms might be present in a person during the prodromal phase afterwards come the ectric phase ectric phase mein kya hoga because the liver is damaged now hepatocytes are damaged now what will happen the metabolism of bile will be affected because of which there will be ectrus there will be jaundice even there will be the changes in the color of stool or the urine so this happens in the ectric phase and the persons might realize that uh, there is something uh, wrong which is happening with the 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 hepatobiliary uh, system the next one comes the convalescent phase which is known as recovery phase so kuch logon ki immunity ki wajah se what will happen they might go into the recovery phase or the convalescent phase where the symptoms will start to subside but kuch log some of them might go into the 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 chronic stage of the disease so this is how the people will be manifesting when they were they are having the hepatitis b infection the next important part is kis tarah se isko diagnose karte hain to diagnose करने के लिए दे आर डिफरेंट स्टेप्स वी हैव टू नो अबाउट नंबर वन थिंग डेफिनेटली हिस्ट्री we have to take the history from the patients we have to perform the physical examination physical examination mein aap dekhenge the person might be having jaundice or there might be uh, like ectrus 
uh, etc present and then the important part is liver function test liver function test aapko batata hai ki liver normal kaam kar raha hai ki wo abnormal kaam kar raha hai although lfts are not the specific markers but yes they are important to uh, be assessed uh, in the initial phase so lfts mein kya ho sakta hai uh, you might have increased bilirubin level you might have uh, decreased uh, this thing albumin level you might have increased liver enzymes jo aapka ast alt hota hai these are the liver enzyme enzymes they might be raised so the person might be having deranged lfts when they are having the jaundice but for the confirmation we have to perform two types of testing one is your serological testing and the second one is your molecular testing jab hum baat karte hain serological testing ki to you have certain serological markers so here There is a list of serological markers. कौन कौन से markers होते हैं Remember, you have eight markers, out of which three are your antigens and five are your antibodies. Just remember, we talked about that virus in the uh, our uh, initial slides, isn't it? उस virus में तीन antigens होते हैं तो कौन कौन से हैं वो HBS antigen, HBE antigen and HBC antigen. So these three are your serological markers. Then comes the antibody. In three antigens, के लिए body antibody बनाएगी. कौन कौन सी? HBS antigen के लिए the body will make anti HBS. That is your hepatitis B surface antibody. HBE antigen के लिए the body will make anti HBE. And for HBC antigen, the body will make three types of antibodies. That is anti HBC, IgM anti HBC, and IgG anti HBC. okay so uh, you have eight serological markers and afterwards you have molecular markers or molecular testing so basically hbv dna levels will be assessed for the and uh, for uh, the assessment of a patient for hepatitis b isme kya pata chalega how many copies of the virus is there in the blood of the persons hbv dna level kitna hai uska it is a dna virus so hbv dna okay so you can quantify the uh, virus with the help of molecular testing where you'll be assessing the hbv dna level of the person and along with that definitely you need to assess about the severity of the liver disease jahan pe aap liver enzymes ka level check karenge and certain invasive and non invasive tests may also be uh, performed on the patients non invasive tests such as फाइब्रो स्कैन ओके फाइब्रो स्कैन इज नोन एज ट्रांसजेंट इलास्टोग्राफी ये क्या होता है दिस इज अ टेस्ट वेर यूल बी असेसिंग टू थिंग्स अबाउट द लिवर वन इज अबाउट द स्टेटोसिस एंड वन इज अबाउट द स्टिफनेस स्टेटोसिस मीन्स लिवर में कितना फैट प्रेजेंट है वो आप असेस करोगे लिवर स्टेटोसिस के थ्रू एंड वट इज द पर्सन इज हैविंग फाइब्रोसिस और द पर्सन इज हैविंग सिरोसिस और द पर्सन इज हैविंग नॉर्मल लिवर सॉफ्ट लिवर दैट कैन बी असेस विद द हेल्प ऑफ लिवर स्टिफनेस रिमेम्बर कोई भी पेशेंट है जिसको हेपेटाइटिस है और उसको सिरोसिस भी है हेपेटाइटिस के साथ में इन दोज केसेस द वैल्यू ऑफ फाइब्रो स्कैन माइट बी मोर देन ट्वेल्व एंड in some individuals even you can uh, go for the invasive test such as liver biopsy we are exactly liver biopsy is the gold standard for the assessment of cirrhosis aapko clearly pata chalega ki patient ko hepatitis ke sath ke sath sath cirrhosis hai ki nahi hai so these are the diagnosis diagnostic tests which will be performed for the patients uh, who are suspected to have the hepatitis b infection so uh, when we talk about the testing algorithm basically this algorithm is given by the national guidelines for diagnosis and management of viral hepatitis in the year 2018 इनके हिसाब से क्या है देखिए आप विल नॉट बी गोइंग फॉर ऑल द सिरोलॉजिकल टेस्टिंग ठीक है वी टॉक्ड अबाउट एट मार्कर्स सो एज पर द गाइडलाइंस वी हैव टू गो फॉर टू टेस्ट वन इज योर एचबीएस एंटीजन द अदर वन इज योर आईजीएम एंटी एचबीसी ओके सो इफ HBS antigen and IgM anti HBC both are reactive or both are positive it means a person is positive patient positive for hepatitis b infection if any one of them either hepatitis HBS antigen or IgM anti HBC either of them is positive then also a person is having the infection if both of them are negative it means there is no hepatitis b infection so basically remember hbs antigen along with igm antibodies tells you about the acute nature of the disease hbs antigen along with igg antibodies tells you about the chronic nature of the disease
Okay, so uh, that's it for today's class. Before I end my class, I'll give you two questions, two, three questions. You have to write down the answers in the comment box. And in the next class, we can just discuss about the answers of those uh, questions. So basically, you have to state whether the statements given are true or false. The first question is, hepatitis B is a single strand RNA virus. Is it a true statement or a false statement? This you have to mention in the comment box. The next one is mother to baby transmission of inf infection is also known as vertical transmission. Again, you have to write it down ki jo mother to baby transmission hota hai, is it a vertical transmission or horizontal transmission? Okay, true statement hai ya false statement hai. And the third and last question is HPV DNA assessment is done through the serological testing. Is it a true statement or a false statement? Aap in dino ke answers comment box mein likhe and in the next class we can just briefly talk about the correct answers for the same. Thank you so much everyone.